Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I hope all of you had a, a delicious meal. Let me tell you that I'm going to have a fun because look at the number of panelists and look at the insights that they are going to get. All of us are going to learn, right? So uh, let me start directly because we have partly discussed co-lending since morning and we also focused on how the co-lending model is shaping up really well, how it can be beneficial for NBFCs more than the banks and we'll also you know, uh, help the whole financial ecosystem to reach to the tier three, tier four towns as well, because the target is also MSMEs, SMEs, and the small uh, and medium sized entrepreneurs. So my first question to all of you is, please tell me what do you think specifically about co-lending, how the model is shaping up for you? What are the ideas that you have? What is your opening perspective specifically for the co-lending? And I will start from here, Ajay, if you could begin. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Hope everyone enjoyed the lunch. So uh, co-lending is uh, definitely one of the uh, co concept which is working very well for our fintech plus NBFCs. So I come from a part where we have our own NBFC, we have our own fintech. Uh, today scaling up is uh, becoming a challenge for a fintech and NBFC that we were discussing in the previous panels also that, uh, you know, we are still limited to a very small ticket size or a small ticket size segments, more, more or less for unsecured lending. One of the reasons how co -lend, why we are looking for co-lending and NBFCs are looking for it because with co-lending you get a credit line, your customers are there, the demand is there. Uh, a customer uh, who is probably taking a loan from me might also be taking a loan from uh, iFinance, from probably from somebody else as well. But at the at the current time, I am not been able to service him because of the capital adequacy that, that is there. But when I'm looking at uh, co-lending model, that's where it assists NBFCs and fintech to give a bigger credit line to increase their books, and that's where banks uh, play a very vital role to for, uh, for coming up into the co-lending model. So that's my take that on co-lending is definitely important for NBFCs to go forward uh, because going to the market, raising funds again and again, raising funds from NCDs, it, it's a time-taking process. But when you have co-lending, you build up a relationship with the bank, you keep on increasing the increasing your AUM, and at the same time, you're managing your NPAs as well. So this gives, uh, for a company like us, this gives us a wide range to grow our products, to service our customers, and to cater the demand of the customers. Sure. Uh, Devashi ji. <laughs> the only banker. Yeah. yeah. And the large uh, bank. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so I'm the only banker in the whole panel. So I'm the, uh, maybe I'm the right hand to give everybody. So, uh, coming to the question uh, of co-lending, we believe uh, from the State Bank of India, I have shown a slide behind, that uh, this is a perfect match or a win-win for the bank as well as NBFCs and HFCs also. By this, we are addressing three pertinent issues. One, already mentioned capital. So, we are here to serve 470 million customers in the country. Imagine the kind of uh, ways and means we have to handle these customers. So today, 97% of the customers are having digital service. So this is one way in capital uh, support to the NBFCs and also digital support to NBFCs. I think both together is a win-win for the bank as well as NBFC. I'll tell you the second part. Because you can't reach to those unbanked areas where you operate, where the NBFCs operate, and where you want to reach through our own means, so we would like to you be the front runner, front end. You talk to the people, you be the like one point contact, SPOC for the customer. And we are here to support you through the capital, through our rules, through our systems, to make it more affordable to the customer. Number three, you all, we all sing the same song as RBA is telling us. So now it is a co-lending, co-origination, or I have mentioned another model, DA. These are all now coming up a long way to support millions of MSME and microfinance in the country. And as a bank, I have also one more area to look after that is priority sector lending. So this gives me ample opportunity to make a priority sector lending more meaningful to NBFCs. So I find this model, among all the models we have in the bank, maybe I'm working at 70 to 80 models of financing, but co-lending is one which I keep number one for a win-win model. Thank you. Sure. Gurunath ji. Thank you, Amol. Uh, I would say this is a movement and not a simple project. I can relate this to the RRB formation uh, around uh, the early, uh, late 70s, when access to finance was a big challenge for people in the tier 4, tier 5 locations. So when the RRBs were formed, 
uh, thanks to banks like SBA, people had started getting access to finance. So with this model, uh, uh, it's very clearly coming out that uh, finally the customer would have access to finance. The needs of the customers are very simple. There is a cost involvement, there is a customization, there is a continuity. Today the biggest challenge is NBSCs may have money, but they are, they are slightly pricey. Banks can lend at a cheaper price, but they are not able to customize because of their large size. And continuity is a big problem. So with this model, I am able to very clearly see that we will be able to help the client. Uh, we all, the three stakeholders should put the client in front and look at how we can scale this model using the expertise of each uh, stakeholder. The banks with their pure size and uh, uh, money power will be able to support uh, the NBFCs. And like uh, Devashi said, there is no pressure on capital for NBFCs. They can go on uh, supporting the client, go on customizing. We always tell an example, if you take a farmer, if he's growing a sugar cane, it's a one-year crop. There is no point in offering him an EMA loan uh, on a sugar cane uh, 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 <coughs> when he's, he is going to get the money at the end of the 12th month. So how do you structure, how do you customize is the key today. But I am able to customize as a non-banking finance company, but I don't have the right capital to support him continuously and the cheaper money. So this model, I would say it's a great movement. How we make it successful is the key. And uh, we are already a beneficiary of a co-lending uh, uh, partnership uh, thanks to State Bank of India. So we are very, very confident and hopeful that uh, many NBSCs would stick to this so that they are not under any pressure to raise capital because today that's the biggest challenge most of the NBSCs are facing. And then customers would ultimately get finance at the right time. That's what uh, would my recommendation. Yeah, sure. Uh Good that you are sitting beside State Bank of India only. So, <laughs> that's <I'll> good. <laughs> sure. Uh, Kilpana ji, please go ahead and share your views because microfinance is one aspect which is on the radar of everybody when it comes to the credit, right? So, please share your opening remarks. Good afternoon, esteemed panel members, ladies and gentlemen. I think co-lending is a very sustainable model, primarily because uh, banks have a huge target in terms of PSL lending. NBACs, we need continuous and reliable funding. Poor people want funding at a cheaper rate. I think this model enables us to actually come up with a, a disruptive solution which can actually cater to the banks, NBFCs and the customer needs. And when it comes to NBFC microfinance institutions per se, uh, basically, what uh, the benefits of co-lending is uh, the yield is um, better, it uh, improves our ROE, ROA, and then for the managed pool, there is no provisioning. Asset base, we are able to increase, and that uh, optimizes our cost. So there are a lot of benefits when it comes to the microfinance institutions in terms of uh, raising capital and even managing our ALM. So the benefits outweighs if at all there are some concerns, I think it can easily be addressed. I think future is going to be co-lending. Okay, future is going to be co-lending. Sumit? Good afternoon, everyone. I think the natural evolution for any industry is that uh, you start with full stack where you have manufacturing, distribution, retail outlet owned by a single entity, any any industry and gradually experts step in at every segment of the process and they are the most, uh, you know, economic surplus maximization will happen. For example, you have some cloth manufacturer who also has retail outlet, who also has the distribution in between. Now you have experts in Surat who will be manufacturing cloth, you would be having experts like brand factory now reliance has to taken over but max showrooms which are shopper stock which are distributing this they are able to innovate on retail they are able to optimize on distribution i don't think financial service is going to be any different at a very high level the challenge is going to be how the risk reward pursued by nbfc and banks are matched across asset classes so economic uh, theory 101 it should definitely evolve in that direction how the manifestation of technology where 
multiple stakeholders from lending partner side and nbfc side bank side and nbfc side they see this uh, risk reward ratio getting matched is a challenge which we have to yet solve um the question is how do we enable it is it a viable model absolutely yes it's the future the clm2 which we'll definitely discuss holds a lot of promise and premise and it can significantly cut short the tech product investment which is required to make this sector work so that's this my personal view on the sector sure sumit sanjay good afternoon everyone uh, see i have no doubt that uh, uh, co lending is going to be a very successful uh, program in the times to come and i think that's what everyone here uh, uh, also uh, reflects uh, and primarily uh, i would look at it from from very uh, existential sort of uh, way that why do banks and uh, nbfcs need to cooperate they've so far been competing so what is the need to cooperate uh, and uh, become cooperative uh, in in that manner and i think the uh thing that i would uh, refer to is uh, one of the gurus in uh, cooperation uh alan bradenberg who's a professor in uh, in stern school in new york he made a statement that uh, when you look at cooperating with someone or cooperating with your rival uh, it's very important to also know that if you don't then what really happens and i think that is the crux that if nbfcs and banks do not cooperate at this point uh someone else is going to go to eat their breakfast some some other rival will come up and will benefit from that the platform is there the markets are there uh the country is moving at a express speed towards inclusion and i think uh, both nbfcs and banks can benefit from that cooperation and i think that's why the co lending is a model that uh, is an important model and and you'll see much more of it in the times to come sure mr murthy no good afternoon everyone uh, i think everybody has spoken there's hardly anything left for me to say but i would say that uh, co lending is one of the different if we have to look at it it is the different way of a liability tool and uh, the only difference i would say is unlike in the past uh, which was all a one way street where you know the lenders used to put their conditions up front to the borrowers i think co lending is a co creation and which is where both the institutions would have to work together in terms of putting their skin into the game obviously percentage and involvement and intensity and all would have vary from percentages early days but i think co creation would lead to lot of innovation uh, i think uh, once one you know one size fits all is something which we could get out of it and you know a lot of innovation in terms of what kind of product what kind of distribution how do we do that is something which could happen if provided both the institutions are really wanting to scale it up uh, future ahead looks good it all depends in terms of how well two institutions are looking and how long are they wanting to run the relationship i think quite meaningful points uh, and i think uh, so mits point about risk reward ratio mismatch or how to improve that and we have we had seen similar challenges when the co lending model took up right i mean uh, synchronization was a challenge uh how to underwrite the loans of the two companies were the challenge but i think a lot of things have been happened now i think quite seamless and and uh, uh you know everybody is quite aggressive so thanks for this positivity from all of you that this is going to be the model of the future uh but i have a couple of uh, questions some specific questions and i would also ask audience to be ready with maybe one or two specific questions i will try my best to come to you and take your questions uh if you have a specific question about wanting a discount from the borrowers on your loan keep that question with you only <laughs> that's not going to happen but be very specific about a co lending model if you have any specific questions uh so debash ji let me come to you uh, and my specific question to you now is uh chahe uh, you know relationship ho uh, husband and wife ki there is someone powerful ya to wife powerful hogi ya to husband powerful hoga in most of the cases we know who is powerful so yahan pe co lending mein there are two companies coming together and one is already at a dominant position one is already a powerful without which the other can't do anything so when now you're working together who's more powerful and how that powerful person will play the role of a dominance power and the whole business because ultimately you have to scale up the business and that's why i'm asking this question to a powerful person yeah good question 
uh, that summarizes the whole story you're talking of. Okay, it's uh, powerful or power sharing both go together. So the 51, 49, 60, 40, 30, 70 or reverse, it depends on the relationship status. So in this co lending, the power is on the hands of NVFC in terms of customers. So they are the single point of contact for the customers. So they are the power lies to deal with them, to handle them, to meet them, being their first port of call for all necessities. The power of the banks or the funding institutes is the capital. Rule. Do we sing the common song? Like we follow the IRAC norms of uh, RBI. We also follow the same kind of models or the rule engines for credit sanction. So it's power shared actually. So one cannot live with the other, but one is having capital or referential support, one is having a customer support. Let me come to second point. Why this model will be uh, symbiotic or sustainable is that both have to depend on each other. Either the way of finding customers or the way of finding the model or common rule or common platform. It has to be a collaboration between NBFC and the funding NC at the bank which will be the key to all success stories. Our experience with uh, our friends here sitting, maybe I know many of them, is that wherever we find that we have a common rule and a common platform, those models are very successful. It's not that we, have, we don't have failures. We have a few. Every marriage uh, has to go through that only. But then there are very few. Unlike the rules in society, our fellows are very, very few where we find that somebody has come up to a level, but again, unable to follow the same rule as we follow. So it is basically a financial regulation, a common rule, risk sharing, customer front end, and capital back end. These are the rules of the game or rules of the relationship that takes it forward. Sure, I think that explains really well. So let me go to your friend. And since we spoke about the relationship, uh, what is going wrong or what goes wrong generally with the relationship? See, uh, <laughs> first of all, we have to understand that we are not competing, we are collaborating. An NBFC can never compete with the bank. Uh, we all know and we should uh, stick to that principle. Second, uh, any new initiatives will have some uh, teething issues, which we all know. But uh, the endeavor is to make this successful. And in that, we have to just see two or three uh, moving parts. One, I would say, what is what are the requirements, what are the challenges, and what is the commitment from both parties? Keeping the client in mind. If you look at the bank, what is their ask in the entire transaction is, they are not able to reach out to these set of clients where NBFCs have access. So they want to deploy their uh, surplus funds, and uh, they will get PSL benefits. One, for the NBFC, they, they don't have access to capital at regular points of time, but they can definitely take care of their customers at a cheaper cost and continuous services. So, the challenge is, if I take an NBFC, NBFC should not do some kind of a pilot on the money of the bank, which I, personally I would be very clear. You should not try out in some different geographies because the endeavor is to make this successful. So, what is that you would do is the key. If you want this model to be successful, think that this is your capital and in what way you would do is what you should execute. Then still uh, there would be a lot of challenges you will face. Like if you typically ask me, initially we had a lot of turnaround uh, time challenges because uh, uh, of a to and fro movement of uh, the documents. But we all knew that it's only for a matter of time. So we are opting for a model where uh, we can directly disburse uh, money to the client. So client doesn't wait. And they, then we go to the partner. And if for any reason partner doesn't want to fund that, still we can take that in our book. Because my job is to lend uh, continuously to the client. So I have to view this as an additional window and not only my single window. That's where the difference lies. And then whenever we have partnership with bigger organizations, we can dip into these services at any point of time. Plan our action in such a way that you take a bigger partner, uh, they would have invested uh, the, on technology to manage their set of operations. But for handling such clients, it would be difficult for them to invest in some kind of a unique technology where the NBCs can put their tech into place and the turnaround times can be bettered 
then that is the way we collaborate. So just going back to my point, we have to collaborate and not compete. There is no point in competing with the bigger partner. I would say I would I would never imagine a situation as of today where we would have a 50-50 partnership. We would start with an 80-20 and maybe if you are very big, uh, maybe slowly move to a 70-30. So that the primary aim is to keep the customer happy because finally it's the customer who would decide where he would go to and he would have access to funds at any point of time. And especially in agriculture, we are all eating every day, three times, four times, thanks to the farmer, he should have access to money. And by this model, I'm, I'm very confident that somehow we'll be able to provide access to the farmers. I would pause here. Okay, I'll just sure. give one point what he uh, concluded. Show the slide, please. Who is showing the slide? Look at option two. Can you? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Can you play the same slide? Yeah, it's there. So what essentially uh, explained is the second option. See, the first option of co-lending is when we join a platform collaboration. Whereas in the second option, like a co-living. You be where you be, I be where I am, but we stay together. So what do you do in that, that position that you keep on disbursing the loans? We have a few sets of rules we'll tell you in advance and we'll keep on uh, like direct assignment basis. We'll do a pool purchase. So we have found that till we have the rules, till we have the regulations ready, till we have the platform ready, we can start easily with the model two, which is now in, in uh, I'm in Chennai only in the last year. Uh, I may not tell the whole figure, but we have substantial exposure in this second model. First model is ready, second is also ready, but second picks of faster is a co-living space. The changes required is minimal. When you are ready, we will marry. Till that, there is a co-living space available to start the operations. So the second point was very akin to what you mentioned just now. Sure, thanks for adding that. So uh, no intention of having a rejoinder here in a debate. This is not a 9 p.m. show, nation wants to know. This is, this is a knowledge session where we would like to learn how you look at it. So meaningful thoughts, but there. So Kalpana ji, let me come to you and understand specifically on the microfinance because there are always reports. In fact, the recent report says that 64 million MSMEs, you know, the credit gap of this much and everything. With a coal lending model, you know, are you able to reach to the maximum number of customers, MSMEs or small entrepreneurs compared to what you used to do perhaps earlier? with the co-lending model aggressively, uh, what's the number that you are achieving to the, or reaching out to the MSMEs because of only the co-lending model? I think the market has yet to mature and uh, Bellstar is going to explore co-lending model only in the current year. Uh, there are typically two, three challenges. So that's why uh, our board also uh, delayed the decision making. One thing is uh, banks preferred a dispersed pool. So the benefits are not reaching the customers. So when we acquire, there's a specific interest rate and so on. So we are not really able to pass on the benefit of the interest rate to the customers. And then KYC is different, collateral. All that uh, issues need to be streamlined. I think there are these are simpler issues. But the major challenge is the tech integration. Um, that takes a lot of time. We need some outside agency, a fintech, or a, a TSP to help us with the technical solution because at the end of the day, we are responsible for recon, for reporting to various banks. So uh, in terms of scaling up, uh, there's ample opportunity to meet all the unmet needs of our existing clientele, but uh, it has not sh taken shape in that extent because, to that extent because uh, uh, basic, uh, some ground rules have to be firmed up and also um, as NBFC MFIs, we are worried whether it will be a long-term relationship because for us, funding is very critical. If uh, based on this partnership, we, if we establish branches and after one or two, and I recruit staff, after one or two years, if co-lending facility is not there, we will not be able to manage. These are some of the practical challenges why it has not scaled up to the potential available. Sure. So, uh, adding to what Kalpana said, Ajay, I want to ask you, Ajay, is 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 a, uh, has co-lending become a very um, uh, major source for the small NBFCs, fintech companies, uh, you know, to get into the lending business as such? And this is what could be the you know a 
new business model for you know these companies, the new edge companies in the lending. So uh, co-lending is definitely an important part, but as uh, Ma'am said that uh, data and product. So when, when you talk about product development, while we see, okay, co-lending two companies are coming together, servicing the customer, but when you actually get into the data, the product set, how you want to develop the product, how you want to pass on the information to the bank, how you want to get the agreements on the place, all of that plays a big part. So a lot of fintechs, if you see, who are into digital lending, they have at least one NBFC on their own name. So they have one NBFC to run the show and at the same time they are partnering with other NBFCs, other banks through co-lending. Because one of the major aspects come into, because RBI also uh, comes into play and banks have certain specific requirements that is definitely has to be matched when it comes to KYC, how are you passing the information, what all data are you collecting, uh, are you managing all the norms, what are your NPA, so there's a huge checklist that is there that, we, that a FinTech and an NBFC has to pass through and then a co-lending model starts. Definitely for a scale up, uh, we need uh, co-lending partners to be there because uh, at, at any point of time, fintechs are still working on their capital, they're working on investments. But at the same time, when it uh, when it comes to a bank, product set is something that becomes a challenge. One co-lending relationship can take up to three to six months to go live. Right? It can take higher time as well. So this is where uh, everybody is currently working on it. People, Banks and NBFCs are still trying to understand how we move forward, what is the what should be the exact uh, product model that should work upon? Like we just saw two models there. Uh, there are other models for when you go to different banks, different NBFC, everybody has a different set of uh, requirements, how they judge the customers, how they underwrite the customers. And you have to build a model for them. Uh, so as a FinTech, how we work is, okay, I have five NBFCs who wants to do a co lending on us and then they have different requirements. Then I get the customer acquisition done. I gave, okay, this set of customers will go to this NBFC probably based on the APR, based on the NPA, based on the credit score. Then as soon as the filter A goes, we go to filter B and then we go to second NBFC. Now, when you look at the product development map for this, it is on a higher side. It takes three to six months for you to develop. Then the acquisition has to be done in the same way. Sure. Thanks, Ajay, for highlighting a very uh, important point. So let me just stop here. I have a couple of questions for the panelists, but let me come to you if you have any specific questions related to the topic and maybe we can go ahead with it. Can we have a mic there in the second row? Just be specific to question. Uh, okay, we'll come to you later. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh -huh. Yeah, my name is Balaji. I, I have a question to the panel. Uh, can a smaller NBFC can have multiple co-lending partners. Is there any stipulation or they can have three or four or multiple uh, co-lendings okay. they can do? Can NBFC they... have multiple partners? Yes, yeah. NBFC. Yeah. Devasi ji, can you? Yeah. I, I don't think there is any limitation to have multiple partners. You can have multiple partners, but as you have heard from the panel, it all depends on uh, say sharing the common platform, how you share the data how you share your information. Because on the back end, there are many, many of the uh, funding agencies, banks. So if every one of them require the data in the same form, then it's the no problem. But if the requirement is different, it may be slightly complex. I will also partially answer to the uh, statement here. Everywhere the data is the oil, right? It connects to both uh, NBFC and the bank. So there are many fintechs now available in the society, in the whole country who can manage the data very well. So the investment of data is not that heavy as it was five years before. We need to have a common database, a data form, which will be utilized by the NBFC and the bank together. Internally, you process in different ways. It's called API. Maybe some tech uh, people can understand. API is something, a solution to data sharing and data management. So through APIs, you can pull, you can push the data. Front end, take the API and process in different form, back end takes in different form. That's the only key part. Otherwise, your question is answered. You can do it multiple patterns. Right. I have a second question, sorry. Important ah. question. Okay. Uh, how to draft a safer exit clause? Suppose, say, for example, as Pam was saying that when at the time, see, if everything is good, you look everything blue. But if there is some kind of uh, uh, exigency where uh, NBFC partner want to exit, a smaller NBFC, 
So what are the things we need to take care at the time of exit clause? Anyone else wants to answer? Sanjay, you want to take that? Uh, yeah. I think I would say the model is so new that we shouldn't worry about what you are saying. Because see, as I mentioned, right. that it is a basis of trust. Now, obviously, we need to be cautious in terms of what are the exit clauses that we have, but we sit on the agreement table thinking that what are the exit clauses that I should worry about, then we will not be able to move forward. There so disclaimer, just a disclaimer. Precisely. I am saying there is nothing because there is no ready-made solution because the model is just evolving. Right. And you know, it again is institution to institution and how the institution performs and the big brother, whoever is having the larger share is the one who will call the shots. Let us be very clear. Uh, <laughs> it is the big brother and uh, over. No, see, end of the day. Okay. If I may just uh, answer that. See, uh, once the co lending uh, uh, is done, for a, they take a loan. If for a loan, 80% was taken by the bank and 20% was taken by the NBFC. Now, if at some stage bank says that I don't want this loan, uh, they don't have that option because it's like giving a loan to a customer. When a bank gives a loan to a customer and let's say it's for a three year tenor, uh, there are clauses that if bank wants to foreclose the loan, there are certain conditions that will have to be fulfilled. It's exactly like that. Have you ever seen a bank go to a customer and say, I want you to pre prepay the loan? Only the prepayment happens when there's a default and there's a delinquency. So one is that the banks will not say that, give me back my 80%, now you, you run the loan yourself. That loan is an individual loan given by the bank to the customer. It's not through the NBFC, that's first thing. Second is that NBFC can only worry about, and what uh, Kalpana ji, I think, mentioned, that today, let's say, the bank is giving you a co-lending line of 100 crores every month. And you grow your branches, you hire your people, etc. And then after two years, the bank says, now I don't want to give you a co-lending line. But isn't that something that can happen even in borrowing? You have a line from State Bank of India, which is 500 crores. Suddenly, two years later, State Bank of India says, bye-bye, I don't want to continue with that. And you find an alternative. So I think uh, it does not add any further concern on that uh, exit. Exit for the bank is that they will have to run with the loan and they can only exit once the loan is over. For you, the thing is that you have to keep multiple options open and you ask a very good question that can you have multiple co-lending options? There is nothing that RBI limits. You can have right. co-lending with as many. It adds to the complexity. So it's important that you do co-lending with two or three, not with 100 uh, banks. So that's your problem. Sure. Debasis, you want to add? Yeah. See, uh, I think... So, so we yeah. have to, uh, since banks are coming, so let me answer this question. Yes. <laughs> I know. So, see, you have to all understand something called lenders liability clause. And we being the largest bank in the country, we are governed by act also. So calling of the loan or exit is something which comes in the last stage of lending process. And for that, this co-lending agreement has sufficient clause to come to that answer to your question. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If failed, then you go to exit clause. So it is not easy. In fact, I'll give one more scenario. So I think all of you know, in 2020, when you had COVID in this country, we had enough options to call up any advance. We were the only bank who supported every advance with the additional uh, lines of credit without any documents or any papers. For what purpose? Lenders liability. Like you took a customer, like you gave a loan to a customer, we also have responsibility to see that customer survives. So exit comes only when we leave all the options closed. Right. COVID has taught us this scenario in the country that it is not the liability of lender to only earn interest, it is also to survival. So please understand, exit is something comes after we exhaust all the options. It is not something comes like once in a lifetime kind of thing. At least I have seen in the last uh, two decades in SBI that the kind of support we have made to all the, lend all the MSME customers in 2020, 21, 22 with the GSL 1, 2, 3 and 4 more than 70,000 crores without any support. 
government came, came later so let us understand we are all here sitting to support a system support the clauses which are in the agreement so i fully agree with you but that is something which you have to cover up so, so what uh, okay i'll i respond to that also if i will <laughs> we'll move to next question but thanks for I'll adding that, that. Thank we will we'll spoke specifically about now the scaling Kamal, up amol can i add a point uh, okay quickly quickly so we have to just introspect what what could be the triggers for the partnership to come to an end when we start the partnership that's a key so list down all those triggers which might create the partnership to come to an end and work on that then to a large extent like murthy said initially nobody would uh, try to close a partnership but in the event of the partnership should come to an end the triggers are addressed at the initial stage itself so that we ensure that the partnership goes on forever that's what right. i would no, no, sure but i think valid points here so let me take one more question i guess uh, yeah the gentleman there hello please go ahead hello yes yes we you are audible go ahead so will it go beyond your priority sector lending and bigger be a bigger picture rather than eating up the space of your ptc or structured products mainly ptc and da no, so will I it limit itself to that space only the market expectations what do you mean by market expectations and i am usually this is going to be a, a a bigger model than psl if i am not wrong i mean the data if you look at for 2020 2023 you know the co lending uh, business loans will be worth 20 25000 crores according to various reports but uh, if you think that it will be still bigger than psl maybe if someone quickly wants to add uh, no i think i i would mention that it will grow and it will not grow only at the cost of a da like you're saying that will it eat into the da market etc i think it'll probably grow grow the pool itself and today it's very small like uh, amol rightly said that it's 25000 crores roughly last financial year whereas the total lending of the banking to nbfc was about 13 billion uh, 13 lakh crores exactly fine uh, and yet there are articles in the press which say that oh uh, co lending has grown too fast now i think it's the journalists who try to sens- sensationalize things and let let it be that, that way but 25000 is very small it will grow and i don't think it will eat into just the it will eat partly into the da segment but it is a segment on its own it's like uh, you know um, is like taking a bath under a, a, a large uh, waterfall or or going to a well and drawing a bucket one uh, one bucket at a time uh, co lending is like opening a tap opening a waterfall and uh, this will increase the overall scope of uh, lending to nbfc by banks is my view it will grow sure. out of your priority sector lending yeah so yes I so it has to it has to go beyond that i'll tell you why see in the bank Uh, although we have a social obligation for private sector and also uh, financial inclusion but we also have a bigger picture so co lending is not limited to this uh, psl or uh, all this kind microfinance or msme it is much bigger than what we think now if everything was fine it will overpower the whole nbfc financing in five years time because when you have platform ready to uh, say the common rule and common engine it can be for uh, financing anything for power projects for last two sets we want partners we have a ppp model uh, five years back you all remember before covid right. public private partnership what is that that is starting with co-lending now we are in middle level when you go up it will be unlimited scope sure thank you uh, any yeah the lady here in the first table yeah i will come to you after this yeah uh, kamalika you are from camps my question is actually based on what kalpana ma'am mentioned she mentioned that tech integration is one of the bigger challenges that are there and that's exactly what digital public goods like oken are trying to solve for so that brings me to my question if banks who have the capital and the resources to start aggressively and if they start aggressively using oken do you think they'll still value the partnerships that they make out of these co lending with the ndfcs because essentially if oken comes in then uh, they could just deploy the funds directly themselves they were just want to add i mean you big a bank <laughs> uh, see your question has two parts 
uh, first about the banker's role in relationship and BFC and also how to take it forward. Both parts will answer together. Initially, as I told before, we are working on more than 70 models of financing. Why we are coming to co-lending as a priority? One, of course, now it is a private sector, but in future it go to other sectors also. But here the rule has to be common. As long as we follow the same rule, I have no question of asking any other thing than let us go together. The problem comes when there is a violation of the rule. So they are also being a SBI or other banks who have different stages of handling it. Like for example, a default happens, we don't auction immediately. We wait 90 days, 180 days, 360 days for time to come back. Tell me what is the problem. We have OTS, we have compromises. So we have different ways of handling lending equations when the rule is not maintained. Point number two. Number three, relationship with NBFC, we value more because of, again, as pointed by that the volume and value are coming up. And we know NBFC is one, which is our right partner to reach the mass of population in the country. We have 470 million customers now. But I want to reach to another 470 million in the coming five years. How do I do that? So when I have partners in NBFC, my objective of inclusion, priority sector, and reaching to the mass of the public is maintained. So I'll not, I'll value this relationship more than anything else. Great. Uh, last one question, last question from the audience. Yes, yeah. go ahead. My name is A. Ramesh Kumar. Huh. I'm from Laraksha Impact Finance Enterprise, a private limited, at NBFC, I'm the CMD. Uh, everyone agrees that co-lending is a great concept. All the panelists agree that it's got a great future. Uh, but what we see is that it is in a kind of a pilot phase for quite a significant time since the rules were laid down. And it doesn't look like it is really going soon beyond the pilot phase. There are a very large number of NBFCs who would be waiting to really latch on to this great model because it solves the great capital uh, requirement problem. What are the criteria that the banks would really look for, for the partners, because if they just look at the best in terms of rating, in terms of cap balance sheet strength, I think the uh, NBFCs to whom they are lending are only just going to, in a large way, are only going to become their partners. Is there going to be a set of criteria which allows smaller NBFCs also to be able to become partners of the banks for full lending? Yeah, sure. Quickly, I mean, I think Devashish yeah. has so many questions yeah, here true. from the banks, but yeah. So, uh, so it is uh, what you asked is the root cause of uh, credit financing model of bank and which directly linked to risk appetite of the bank. So I can only give you SBA perspective because I can't comment on others. There are many things I can say, but I can only give our perspective. For some time when the uh, model was co-origination, before co-lending, if you remember in 2018 onwards, uh, there was a lot of things debated with RBI and SBI and many other partners. We had almost a full day session on how to take origination to progress. It didn't happen. Now, co-lending model we have acquired, tested and rolled out. You have seen that. In that also, I have shown you two options always that this is one, this is two. We have again flexibility to have lower or the AUM based NBFCs to start with and come to a co-lending model. So model is evolving. I know this time is time to introspect, to do questions, to answers, to test, to go for a UI or whatever. But I am confident that this model has come to a live stage now. It is not in the books. It is in the field. You can see it now. Second part is whether it is SBI or any other bank, we all have a definite credit risk assessment model. And we use that for lending or for co-lending, for any lending, for financing, 1,000, 10,000 crores, we have a model. We have a model for everyone. We keep on tweaking the model based on the requirement. Right now, the model, if seems to be tough, which is not, because we have already tested it, will bring down the models, different parameters to capture more market share. So my point is, it's not positive, negative. My point is, it's already live. And we must see that it is taking proper force or proper momentum to spread it. Thank you. Sure. So first of all, I want all of you to clap for yourself. Can you please have it? Thank you so much. Now please clap once again for the panelists here.
I never thought there will be so much interest from all of you, specifically after the lunch. And you asked so many uh, remarkable questions. Thank you so much. So I still have a couple of questions left and I will start my last round of questions to all of you here quickly. I will come to you, Mr. Murthy, and I want you to tell us, going ahead in next, next maybe two to three years, how do you see the whole coal lending model panning up? How do you see the sustainability of this model? Because ultimately there will be some challenges as well. Uh, not about just exit calls, but there could be so many other uh, aspects also. Maybe delinquencies, maybe perhaps the companies are not working well in together. So what do you think will be the sustainable model going ahead in the next two to three years according to you? No, I think uh, <clears throat> as uh, the gentleman basically said, any co-lending relationship to get into a relationship, let me assure you, it takes close to about eight to nine months to close the relationship. And uh, we have been speaking to banks and it's definitely not that easy to get into a lending arrangement. Mm -hmm. Because very frankly speaking, you know, you have, who, who owns the customer? End of the day, let's be very clear who owns the customer. Do I who source the customer, I own it by just lending, uh, keep, keeping my skin at 20% or is it the big brother who actually owns uh, 80%? Mm -hmm. Having said that, the risk policies of that particular institution to the risk policies of this institution, convergence of the risk with the IT infrastructure. Mm -hmm. I think these are the biggest challenges that we have. And as long as the going is good, trust me, nobody bothers. But in okay. case if there is a delinquency that comes in, the post effects that you basically said, what are the remedial risk mitigations that you have? Amazing model. I, uh, one of the, you asked that uh, will DA model come down or whatever it is. I presume that it is co-lending is a subset of the overall lending business. Mm. It is just one of the other alternative tools that the lending institutions feel comfortable when the other institution also puts some money. But yes, as I mentioned to you that if both the partners are willing to develop the market, I think from a sustainability point of view, if they both come onto the table, table there's huge that can be done. There's a lot of stuff that could be done. It is just not right. only lending, but I think you got to be very clear in terms of what kind of underwriting norms do you agree on, what kind of tech processes, what kind of reporting methods methodologies, you know, credit bureaus, who reports what, to what extent, right. how do you look at it and you still don't trust. See, it's a, the trust only develops as the relationship matures. Today Absolutely. you are opening an escrow account and you are putting that money thinking that, you know, the other guy might run off, so let me keep the money in escrow account. I think the time only will evolve and tell that how sustainable it can be, but I think at least there is a product where two parties are coming together and wanting to work together. Right. Sure. Uh, noted your points, Mr. Murthy. So Sanjay, basically Murthy sir ka kehna ye hai ki 8-9 mene mein relationship ban jayegi, nahi to adat ho jayegi. So, so my question to you, Sanjay, is what if, uh, you know, we have to ensure that the relationship will continue and the divorce will never happen. So what are the provisions that both the party parties should make so that this relation will blossom year after year? I think it's an uh, excellent question because uh, the reason why there is a slow, slow improvement in trust is that banks have to first of all say that, you know, the underwriting or the lending is to the same yardsticks as they would probably put for their lending. And do they think that NBFCs put in the same amount of diligence? Uh, and it'll take time, but it'll, it'll come. And I think the divorce can happen in this relation. It's, it's like an engagement. We are today at an engagement phase, uh, and it is a long-term marriage that we are looking at. But divorce can happen here if the, there is a hiding of information, or which, which breaks the trust. Or second is that there is incompetence. Both can, ha both can lead to a, a fallout. Uh, it's very important, therefore, in the coming years, we make sure that there are no surprises that, oh, someone uh, made a huge amount of lending and uh, they did not do the due diligence, there was very little data or data was wrong, and there's a big loss. That will really dent the, uh, the trust that uh, would have developed. The second is, and this comes out of incompetence of the NBFC or the sourcing entity. The second thing that I talked of was uh, actually the trust that is the other entity really interested in doing this long term? Or they're a fly-by-night operator, so both have to be taken care of. One thing that I feel 
uh, has uh, been a positive move in my view is that RBI very recently said that the first loss guarantee should not be given by the co-lending NBFC. And I think that's a very important step because as long as there's a first loss guarantee, the banks can be lulled into a false feeling of security that kuch bhi nahi hoga to NBFC will pay the first loss. But the important thing is that the bank should say that we are willing to take risk shoulder to shoulder with the NBFC and this is forcing the banks to look at uh, that. This has slowed down the, the momentum that was building. Someone said that momentum is very slow and even I believe momentum is too slow. This is such a great opportunity, it should have been picked up uh, straight away. But I think somewhere because of that first loss guarantee going, going out, the banks have slowed down, but they will come back. So I think to summarize, uh, the divorce can happen if uh, either you cheat, which means that your intent is not right, or you are incompetent. Both can lead to that, and those are the things that NBFC, uh, NBFCs have to guard against because NBFCs uh, have a lot to gain from this. So they better make sure that they do good lending and they don't pass on the bad eggs to the, to, to the banks. Yeah, sure. So meet the, we spoke about the integration and uh, the initial challenges were about the due diligence because everybody has a different risk parameters and that still is a challenge with some microfinance companies and BFCs and large banks. Going ahead, what could be the solution so that uh, the banks, NBFCs, microfinance companies or all the lenders under co-lending can come on the same page and perhaps lend seamlessly and follow the same due diligence process? Is there something can happen like that or, you know, everybody will still follow different rules and, you know, different ball games. So bank will follow, uh, bank will maybe uh, disburse loans to Vijay Malya according to their parameters and NBFC will disburse him according to their parameters. Will this dichotomy continue? No, I, look, I have my own wish list, which I hope the mighty regulators will look at. But, you know, we are still in very initial days of the um, co-lending integration. I don't think the system today from a tech product capability, someone asked that, you know, uh, on balance sheet debt provider are just same as the co-lending arrangement, I beg to differ because the amount of tech product integration, the amount of management alignment, the amount of underwriting alignment, SOP collections you have to do on a co-lending arrangement is mammoth as compared to balance sheet load. So that friction to swap in swap out your lending partner is immensely high. Now today if you ask me, you know, maybe five, seven years down the line, the answer would be obvious and the answers would come from two to three different approaches. One, regulatory relaxation, more encouragement to models such as CLM2, which doesn't fundamentally require as much heavy lifting on the tech product integration. Birth of a whole new industry where there are uh, TSP connectors, platforms, which are making connection between the lending partner and whole variety of NBFC. So it could be, you know, as some, um, you know, mutual understanding with the, between the, um, like almost how you have today UPI established protocols for integration, there might be Oaken or there might be a new entity which could bring this standardization across the industry, which reduces the pain point of swapping in and out a uh, banking partner. I think that holds the key to a lot of um, future comments about how soon this can pick up and how soon uh, it could go across asset classes. Today, if you were to look at gold as an asset class, probably the you can depend on few partnership because the fungibility is on the asset and not on the risk reward ratio. I mean, one kg of gold is same to everyone in a ballpark range. So these are some of the nuances, whereas an unsecured loan would always require multiple stakeholder and it always, across business cycle, it will move. So answer would depend a lot on this, uh, you know, future of how the standardization of tech product integration, relaxation from RBI side in terms of doing these integrations. Right. Sure. Uh, quickly on the microfinance side, Kalpana ji, because you said that, you know, you're going to explore co-lending model only going ahead and far more aggressively. Uh, what kind of uh, business do you think uh, will microfinance company like you will make maybe in next two to three years? Have you made any projections over there? Yeah, we are primarily looking at the MSME segment because uh, RBI has its own uh, classification. So uh, the opportunity to do my uh, MSME under my, as an NBFC MFI is limited. So 
uh, co-lending uh, gives us a lot of option because we have mature clients. But as NBFCs, we have to be prepared in terms of uh, uh, governance is one crucial issue. Then, and also uh, we have to invest uh, in terms of uh, understanding the whole process, prepare the team, build a good uh, portfolio, risk framework. These are the things which we need to do. Then we can actually um, um, serve uh, uh, MSME clients, housing, people who need housing, all those avenues can be uh, taken up because we have a qualifying asset criteria. So we have only 25% bandwidth to actually experiment with other products. So coal lending actually gives us an opportunity to build that book. So we have to gear up and uh, be prepared to take the plunge. Sure. Gurunathji, do you think that with the coal lending uh, for NBFCs or maybe uh, finance companies like uh, you and many others, the funding problem has been also resolved. Yeah, to a large extent. Uh, uh, but to sustain that, I would uh, say a couple of points. One is uh, to answer Sir's uh, question. Uh, banks take a bet on the execution skills of NBFCs and not on the balance sheet. If, if they have to take a call on the balance sheet, then they would not come for co-lending. They will go for a direct lending. So that's a plus point for all the NBFCs. So we should focus more on or execution skills that would sustain uh, the model. The second and uh, the most important thing is the portfolio performance is one of the key indicators for both sides. I have always seen uh, when there is a say par of say three four percent, everybody is focusing on the four percent and forgetting the ninety six percent of good customers. So the alignment has to be on the performing customers so that we scale the book and once you scale the book, the, the four would become a two. So that is how the model would uh, be successful because there will be delinquencies in any lending. Uh, you cannot have a clean book and there will be delinquencies and we should be ready for it. How do we handle is the key. And uh, so it is either, either on your book or on co-lending. This is going to be the challenge. And how do we face that is the key. And there are ways and means by which we handle that. And uh, as, as our book, how do we handle it? We do the same uh, thing to the co-lending. Then I'm sure it's going to be a sustainable model. Okay, sure. Uh, Devashish, quickly, the question is in two parts. Do you think the co-lending, uh, obviously we all uh, uh, discussed how important and how innovative and how wonderful this model is. Will you be limited to, uh, when it comes to co-lending model, to only maybe uh, MSMEs, SME, or a small to medium size of uh, partnership specifically or co-lending? Or do you also see in future this is going to be with the large loans as well, the kinds of maybe consortium which SBI and many other banks used to have, do you see it's reaching to that level? And in a different manner, do you see a scope for building bigger loan book with the co-lending model? I already, I think when I spoke to him, I mentioned this. Uh, this is not limited to uh, microfinance. Uh, we have a bigger picture in mind. Uh, and in fact, let me tell the audience and the panelists here, we're actively now creating a platform for NBFCs, for co-lending only. So the whole data and what we discussed, the limitations or challenges of data transfer between bank and uh, partner NBFC will be totally eliminated. The same platform which you will be having, the same thing will be also the banks. We have a common platform. Back end, we do so many things that are different. But front end will be the same for both the bank as well as NBFC. So that will be solving the scale up of operations which were actively uh, participating. In fact, we are also partner to another platform called PSB Loans in 15minutes.com, the first online lending platform in the country, MSME. So there we learned a lot of things and uh, we are ourselves making a platform ready for the co-lending. Coming to the second part, you know, this is not limited to small finance. This, limit, this will be always a picture where country can take forward, like I mentioned about public-private partnership. So this is bank NBFC partnership and NBFC can be anyone. We spoke to many of the large NBFCs in the country and we're doing many uh, kind of solutions for them through co-lending, now through DA or through pool purchase, several models we follow it. Let me assure you one thing. We discussed co-lending in detail and I'm very thankful the panelists have come out with many ideas. I've captured many of them. But as a bank, we find this is the only model to reach the masses. If we have a financial inclusion in mind, we must go through co-lending, otherwise reaching them is very, very difficult in this country. Sure. Uh, quite uh, meaningful thoughts, Devashish ji. Ajay, uh, how do you see the, with the co-lending hold, the credit delivery model will improve going ahead and how do you see 
credit, uh, how do you see credit uh, co-lending model getting sustainable over the next three to four years? So delivery, obviously, because at the end of the day, the customers are there and the companies are able to reach out to the audience. As uh, Debashi sir said, that uh, the idea is to reach out the masses. They want to double up their customer base at the same time because they know the last mile delivery is there thanks to digital ways of doing it and obviously the presence having in the smaller cities also tier 2, tier 3 cities as well. Uh, in terms of being it sustainable, as Sunil mentioned that it's going to take some time. It's still a baby, it's still growing up. Uh, we are still discussing how things can go. SBI is building a, a platform. Other banks are also probably working on it. Uh, then there would be a, a time that wherein you have to do different integration with different banks. With an API document today, what do you see? If you want to do disbursements, you have different API documents for all the banks. But then you have a platform like uh, uh, our payment in payment companies, which can give you one single platform to connect all the banks. So I think the sustainability model will come with time. Uh, it also depends upon the initial relationships that happens in They should go very well so that the, the path is clear for smaller NBFC, for a middle segment NBFCs to also enter into it. And then within time, we will definitely see that, okay, this would be good enough for NBFCs to reach out. Because once you get a credit line, it becomes easier for us to reach out the audience. And as everybody just said, that it's a it's an investment for any NBFCs to get into co-lending model. And that has to be sustainable in order to get profit from that. So that, that would be my take for this. Sure, I think. Uh, thanks, thanks for adding that, Ajay. Uh, the time is absolutely up. We have finished on time, I must say. Uh, thanks for sharing all these remarkable, relevant and futuristic thoughts. And more importantly, thanks for being very engaging. Thanks for shooting uh, really pertinent questions. And uh, not to convert into a debate, but it was really meaningful to uh, listen to your questions and listen to all of you. Thank you so much for being part of ETBFSI and BFC Connect. And thank you so much for listening to us very, very patiently. Thank you.